Hello, welcome to this lesson of Mastering Statistics. We're going to continue talking about the normal probability distribution. Specifically, we're going to talk about some properties of the normal distribution that I've kind of already talked about a little bit, but I'd like to draw a few more pictures and really show you what I'm talking about. We said in the last section that the normal probability distribution is completely defined, the shape of it is defined by the mean and the standard deviation of whatever your data is. So if you think back to our last section, we talked about watermelons. And we said that there will be a mean of, if you looked at all the watermelons in the world, uh, adult mature watermelons, there would be an average value or a mean that would be sort of an average value for the length of those watermelons. There would also be a standard deviation which would be how far uh, either higher or lower beyond the mean, either up or down, um, would be you know, a representation of the spread of that data. In other words, do you have lots and lots of outliers or are most of the watermelons clustered around the mean? We talked a lot about mean and standard deviation in volume one of Mastering Statistics. Um, so you should be pretty comfortable with that, but those two things, mean standard deviation, they really do lock down the shape of the normal curve. So let me show you that. Uh, I am gonna show you that the uh, equation, again, I'm going to put on the board, uh, even though you don't really need it, I just want to kind of just keep it in the back of your mind just so you know there is an equation out there that describes this. So it's going to be 1 over sigma square root of 2 pi, whoops, 2 pi like this, sigma being the standard deviation, e to the minus x minus the mean squared, and then over here I have 2 sigma squared. So as I said before in the last section, um, once you lock down a value for the, for the standard deviation, which is the sigma here, and you lock down a value of the mean of your data, then everything in this equation is a number except for the x, and that's all you're just plotting against x. And so then you get that bell shape. If you change the mean, or you change the standard deviation, then the overall shape will be a bell, but it'll look different. So let me show you that. All right, let's look at two curves. The first one, and let's say they're centered around a mean of 60, so this is the mean, right? So that means the peak of the bell curve is going to be around 60. This could be anything. This could be the length of, I don't know, the length of lemon trees or something. So, and the mean value of them are 60 inches or something. I don't know. It could be, could be whatever you want. But let's say you do something like this. So for our lemon trees, let me go ahead and, well, I want to do a... I want to show a vertical line here, just for reference. So there's our vertical line, represents our mean there. Uh, so we can have one curve that goes like this, okay? And the other side. Now again, you gotta remember, I'm trying to be symmetrical. It's not exactly perfect, but I'm trying to be symmetrical. 